Hello, my name is Gary Willett. I want to show you how to make 3D printed teeth and chain. And with this software from Sculptress, I want to show you how you can print what you make. But there's some little tricks that I've come up with to make this run a little smoother. I'm not too crazy on narrating. I just don't like hearing my voice. It just sounds different. Plus, my southern accent it sucks. I mean, basically all you can do is just make one set of teeth, one denture, and then you just flip it. Uh, when you bring in another mesh, you bring in the upper denture and change it to the lower denture. When you finish your upper and lower denture, you click save and name it upper and lower denture or something. Select all the lower teeth and the gum, drag straight down and then you need to export as OBJ. Now you need to select upper and lower denture. Just reopen it and it should be back new again. And then you need to bring all of the upper teeth up as you see here. You do the exact same thing and then you need to export again as an OBJ as upper. You open Blender and delete the cube, and then you need to import Wavefront OBJ and look for your upper denture. And sometimes the file is going to be somewhat big, so it might take a little time for it to load up. As soon as it loads up, you'll have a perspective view of it and you need to press 5 on your key on your keypad to bring up a, the right ortho which will be the number 3 so press 5 and then press 3 and you'll get a pro, right profile of it orthographic view Now you need to select the upper part of it because these two meshes are together and you see how it's highlighted in yellow and then you need to click here to go into edit mode and this is where it will highlight everything as you see here but if you press A you'll deselect it and then but you're still in edit mode now you could edit this if you'd like what we're going to do is get rid of the lower mesh which is messed up because we drug it all together on the keyboard select B and highlight the lower part of the denture there and then press delete and remove it go back in object mode and then you need to uh, import your lower part of the denture now.
take a little while for the lower to load up. Once again, it's a big mesh. But as soon as it loads up, it's going to look kind of weird. It's going to be overlapping meshes. And as you see, the upper and what you just brought in are two separate meshes. So now you just go right back into edit mode again and deselect it by pressing A. And then you need to press B and highlight the bad upper denture and hit delete. And when you do this, it should bring the two together as the upper and lower denture being both of them correct. There's a new add-on in Blender called Box Cutter. This will allow you to make flat plane cuts and it's really a cool tool. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, but uh, when you're in orthographic view and you press Alt W, you will activate Box Cutter. There's a blue outline, as you notice on the screen there. But uh, what you do, you highlight your the one you want to cut. And this is done in object mode. You just uh, hold down Shift Control, draw a box, and if you hit X, you can change it to. Uh, red and this will make the the cut if you keep it yellow it will separate the cut so you'll have the two pieces and I'll show you more of that later on in another video because it'll help with animatronic design as far as skull pieces I do the lower to make it flat I just I'll click on the lower denture by selecting it and then I'll repeat the process and just draw the yellow box there uh, and press X to make it red and double click it's flat and I'm liking that for my designs This is like a design for like, I can easily add this to a skull since it's being flat or make it the cradle in the jaw, but later on in another video. But here I'm just going to bring it up to a, an eye level for me to print them both one time on flat plane. So you can just press uh, rotate, type in 180 and just bring it down, match it. The main thing I want to do here is make this lower more into a lower denture by removing the inside of this. It, I mean, it appears to look like an upper, but once again, using box cutter, I can simply just drag this yellow box and I'll uh, press X to turn it to red, and this will make this part just disappear. But if you hold down your mouse wheel or rotate your mouse wheel, you can make these edges have a more of a curved look but as you see here it's just a wonderful tool because it makes you think and I'm really surprised at the cuts and then it it it, it makes them the mesh the 2.8 blender is about to come out so that's something to be excited about for me but uh, the measurement thing is what gets me and I really enjoy seeing my measurements and Leonard can do it but a SketchUp seems to do it uh, better for me but uh, I'm, I've been hearing some good things about the future of Blender but uh, once again right here I'm just going to export this as a uh, 
STL file. Now I'm going to open up Cura. Cura is a 3D printing program and I just enlarge it and watch my measurements. And that's just it. The measurement thing is just hard to get used to. But this print here was two and a half, uh, three and a half hours. And, uh, and then I took it to my dental lathe and I polished some of the layer lines out. And then I just placed the two cups, cut, cut a cup in half and uh, hot glued it to the table here and mixed up some Molestar 30 from Smooth On. And I did vacuum it. And this takes uh, six hour cure and it came out really well. And I dropped some monomer in the molds, as you see coming up, to where you know I kind of I kind of clean it up some. After cleanup, you know you just wipe it out, and uh, you kind of want to notice where the line. You'll see it inside the mold where the gingiva and the tooth meet. And I'll add some monomer. And this is the salt and pepper method uh, as far as dental lab slang, I guess. Uh, I'll just fill the mold up with a little bit of monomer and I'll sprinkle in the tooth acrylic. And this is shade 62. And as you see it flowing from this container, it a kind of flow kind of like quicksand in a way and it'll slowly fill in uh, the, the tooth cavities. Uh, dental, dental acrylic monomers uh, it has a really bad odor to it but you know I've been doing it so long I don't smell it no more. Uh, that's not a good thing I guess but I just kind of repeat this process and I mean, you can see the acrylic flow into the cavity, and you, you really don't want it to, you know, set up on you. You have to continue doing this, but you're not filling the entire mole up. You're just filling the teeth area. And as soon as that's done, it shouldn't take you no more than two or three minutes to do that. And then you submerge them in the in warm water, and you don't want to put them in there where it's too soupy either. Uh, you'll get water bubbles. And, but you'll know it's somewhat firm and too firm will produce porosity which is air bubbles. But you know you just put it in the pressure pot for like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 pounds and after that they're pretty much cured for most dental acrylics that are quick cured or cold cured they call it. You demole and clean the mold again and pull these upper and lowers out and now the fun part begins where we grind the tooth acrylic gingiva away and I'm using a dental lathe. Now you could probably do this with a Dremel handpiece. I mean it's you know I, 30, almost 30 years in the dental lab and I have my own dental lathe and it, it it cuts really nice and the thinner the disc you have you can get really fine detail in between the gingiva of these teeth and but it's this is the time consuming part and there's waste but the results you will absolutely love and especially for doing creature teeth it's even it's just wonderful. Uh, you, you can get some really good realistic effects using dental acrylic. Here, I just keep keep grinding away the. The thinner the disc is better once again, but uh, I actually do this in the real world at the dental lab where we do uh, 
procedure called a rebase where I remove the pink acrylic or brunette acrylic away from the teeth. Uh, the doctor has asked us to uh, you know, pour in the impressions and just basically just make a, a new denture using their existing teeth. I'll remove the acrylic away from the teeth and you know after we pour up the impressions and I invest it and I do a putty matrix with this uh, silicone and slowly I just remove the acrylic and then I'll have an arch and I'll just pop the arch back into the socket and pack it with new acrylic and it'll be like a new denture for the patient. Here I'm applying some, a thin coat of Vaseline on the outside of the teeth and this is the part that the teeth are touching the silicone. I want this to be a barrier so when I pour in the monomer and the pink acrylic and this uh, help won't have any type of bleed over onto the teeth. Once again, I'm just putting some monomer around the teeth, making sure they're in the sockets right, and then slowly I'll just sprinkle in some more pink acrylic now. So this is the part where we're going to make this gum, and I'll just do it the same method as I did with the uh, shade acrylic for the teeth. But I just keep it saturated so I can build it up but I could mix up a soupy batch of acrylic into a pour now I, I would recommend sprinkling it first or doing a salt and pepper method to just get some of that soupy mix around the gingiva of the teeth place them back into the pressure pot Temperature of the water is about 100 degrees. Pressure is about 15 pounds for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And you should be cured. After time pass, now we can demold. Just remove them from the silicone. And you'll, you'll see the result. This looks really, really good. Now we need to clean them up. And once again, we go back to the dental lathe for that. I try to document a lot of my things I make. It's kind of an obsession. But here I'm just using my dental lathe and just because uh, be careful, uh, acrylic can be very sharp. But uh, just remove the excess, the flash area sand down the base um, and then here I'm using a, this is pumice but it's emery board powder and it uh, it it's really a good pumice and uh, but you can sit here and take time and be careful hold it with both hands anytime you're using this like dental lathe and no be careful of your if you have long hair or something because this thing will get you this dental lathe is it's a it's a it's a tool always be careful but now here I'm using a rag wheel this is a, like a felt rag wheel and I use uh, rouge uh, my wheel is somewhat damp and I can put a really good high shine on this acrylic and it can be very very shiny and your results you'll be pleased I just like working with dental acrylic because that's what I've been doing for the past 30 some years. You know, I played with it even before I started in the dental lab business. But uh, <clears throat> as you see here, the results are good. I mean, I can sit here and spend more time on it, but just have fun with it. And I hope this has helped. And y'all have fun making uh, creature teeth.